guys, this is Amit Rajavi and welcome to class number seven. In this class, we want to talk about this scene, this village, and we want to set up the lighting for a daylight uh, as our first exercise in this course. Okay. Um, in previous classes, we talked about many different light sources, such as emitters, uh, environment lights, sky, image-based lighting. And in this class, we want to use them to show you how you can lighting a scene in a very, very realistic way. Because the lighting is very important before we start to using the camera and using the material system in Maxwell Studio. And this is really, really important. This is my scene. If I'm uh, tumble the scene, going to see all of the details, all of the objects. And if I choose any object and press C, I can uh, frame on it and see what is the different elements in this amazing scene. Here are the objects. As you can see, we have one group that we call it village and assign a main material to it. Main material is a default material in Maxwell Studio. And now I want to create a camera and set up my angle. This is really, really important. If I'm going to this attribute panel uh, below the environment, right click and create new camera. The shortcut is Command Shift C or uh, Control Shift C on Windows machines. I press it and now I have a camera and Maxwell Studio created this camera from my perspective view. If I change the perspective view, you can see the camera here. If I press Alt K and disable the background, you can see the camera. And here in, with this button, if I click on it, I can choose and switch between the perspective and the main camera. Okay, I will change the name as main cam because I want to set up this cam for my main camera in the scene. We can have many, many cameras that we need uh, by right click here and create a camera or using the shortcut in the perspective view. This is totally easy. And if you go to main camera or your camera with any name and double click on it, you can switch to your camera that you want. Okay, I will switch back to perspective view or change it to main camera and change the camera and switch it to any different angles that I want. And I can use uh, these features to choose a very great composition for my shot. This is really amazing. I totally love this. And I can change the camera setting. I'm going to camera, select it, go into camera parameters. And here you can see the basics tabs and extra tab. In basic tab, we have a sensor. Very cool. We can set the resolution and the film back. This is the sensor size of my camera that you can search for any camera in real world and see what is the number for the film back or sensor size and put them here and change the film back to any situation that you want, any sensor size that you want. This is totally amazing. And you have optics here that you can change the focal length. Okay, I will choose 24 for focal length for a very, very wide angle shot. I will choose eight mil 18 millimeters. Okay, very cool. And change the resolution to something like this. Okay, the second number will change because these numbers are locked together, are bound together or chained together. And I will uh, press on this locker to unlock this option and choose uh, 1080 for my resolution. This is the film back. Now I can lock them. And if I change the resolution to something like this, you can see the second number will be changed by the aspect ratio that I choose for these numbers. Very cool. I can change it to full HD. This is the focal length. This is my shot. If I change it a bit, okay, I want to change it to something like this. This is my scene. This is my camera and this is my camera setup. This is the first step to render a very, very realistic scene. 
First of all, you need to choose your angle. This is really important. If you want to know more about the composition in photography, you can go to the internet and search about the rules of composition. And this is really, really important for you to know about these rules because you need to have a very, very, very great shot before you start the lighting the scene. Okay, now we want to start our lighting setup. This is a really, really uh, easy process in Maxwell because of the great tools that we have. If I go into interactive preview and press on fire and select the environment, you can see we are going to use the sky settings. Sky type is physical sky. And now we have a very, very, very realistic lighting setup. Okay, but what is going on? This is the depth of field that uh, we see in our render. I don't want to have depth of field feature for now. I'm going to main camera and going to uh, the optics rollout and my lens setup is by default is thin lens and thin lens is a very, very important feature. You have a very realistic and physical features of your lens with this option. But now I don't want to have depth of field and any other feature. I can use pinhole camera. With pinhole, you can only use a camera to receive your light only. You can use the ISO shutter f-stop to change the light situation and exposure control system. And now this is working for me to use pinhole. I'm happy with it. And I'm going back to environment. And these are the features that you know about them because we taught you uh, these features in previous classes and now we want to use them to have a very, very amazing lighting setup for daylight. With these features, we can uh, set up different types of lighting for the daylight. We can set for sunrise, sunsets and or for the noon situation. This is totally easy, okay, because we know them. If I go into physical uh, type of design, and change the power for the sun power, you can see the result immediately with interactive preview, fire feature in Maxwell Studio. This is amazing. I can change the sun radius factor to 15. Now we can see a very blurry or soft shadow that we need here. Okay, we can change the sun temperature, but the main thing for different situation of the Physical sun and sky is how we can set the location for our sun. This is really important. I can change it from, to, from latitude longitude to angles. Okay. When I choose angles, we have zenith or azimuth here. With zenith, as you can see, I can change it to a sunrise situation something like this, or sunset, if I change the zenith. Wow, really amazing. And I can change the azimuth to change the light direction. Very cool. I want to use this light situation and change the zenith a bit. This can be uh, a sunset, something like this. Whoa, change the azimuth. And also we can use the main camera to change the exposure control, okay? Changing the shutter speed, changing the f-stop, ISO. We can show you these features in the next chapter in the next class. But in this class, we want to use different options in sun and the sky. And this is our first, first practical exercise in this course. Very cool. I want to change the shadows. I can change the radius factor from 15 to five for a very sharper and harsher shadow. Very cool. We can change the ozone to have a very bluish sky something like this 
or change the water very cool for an amazing sun rise uh, something like this ozone is two change the wavelength exponent to five amazing and very good and going back and change the zenith change the azimuth to this change the water to 200 or 100 very good I'm happy with this result and after that I can render my final project okay how we can do this this is really really easy you can only need to go to this render button and press the render if you have GPU that compatible with Maxwell Studio I recommend you that you use GPU because it will be very very fast and very very faster than CPU but I'm working on Mac OS and uh, Next Limit doesn't support uh, AMD cards and Mac OS Metal feature and we need to render it with CPU. This is very slower than the GPU but there's uh, no option for me to use this. I will press the render and after that you can see a new window. The Maxwell render frame buffer will be appear here and you can see a very very different options that we will cover all of them in the next chapters and here you can use the middle button to pan in the frame buffer or using the minus and plus button on the keyboard to zoom out and zoom in very good this is the rendering process this is the sampling level number that you can uh, choose all of them in the uh, render options we will cover these options in the next chapters and this is our first render that we have for the practical reason uh, in this course and hope you enjoy it and hope you enjoy this class in the next chapters we will cover many 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 more options hope to see you again thank you bye